As trail runners, we like to carry the absolute minimum amount of gear so that we can travel as fast and light as possible. But things can change in an instant with something as trivial as a rolled ankle or simply by getting a little lost, turning what should have been a two hour run into a full day slog. You might need to hunker down to wait for help or just find yourself stopping to help someone else in need. In this video, I'm going to show you the 10 trail running essentials that I carry to stay safe on the trails, all of which fit comfortably in a 12 liter pack. Lack of light is the single highest cause of overdue calls to search and rescue, and it's something that is so easy to avoid. Modern headlamps are so small and light that in my opinion, there's no reason not to carry one anytime you head out on the trails, no matter what time of day. And if you are planning on being out at night, bring a backup or at least a spare battery. Many running packs come with a built-in whistle, although these can leave something to be desired. So you may want to consider upgrading for a much louder whistle like this one. You'd be surprised at just how much further this can carry than your voice in heavy rain and fog. If you do find yourself having to call for help while awaiting rescue, a whistle takes much less energy and is therefore much more sustainable than yelling. And remember, three blasts is the international distress call. I generate a lot of heat when running, so I try to always start a little cold. But as a rule of thumb, I always make sure I can stand still for at least 20 minutes at any time without getting a chill. So I will always pack at a minimum some arm warmers, a buff, and maybe a lightweight shell. But in colder months or whenever I'm in the Alpine, I'll bring a hard shell, gloves, and often even a lightweight down puffy like this one. Just remember to pack it in a Ziploc freezer bag to keep it dry. Again here, many packs come with a disposable space blanket, which works great in the summer. An injured runner can go into shock pretty quickly, and a space blanket can be wrapped around them like a cape or even worn like a skirt. It can also be used as a signaling device. That's why it's not uncommon to see one or even two of these being part of the required kit for mountain trail races. But I like to step it up a notch with one of these emergency bivy sacks, which is essentially like a space blanket that you can climb into. Now this would make for one of the least comfortable night's sleep you've ever had, but it can keep you alive in the worst case scenario. As part of your trip planning, you may have determined that your route has plenty of fresh water sources. So instead of carrying liters of extra water, you can instead rely on a water filter so that you can safely pull water en route. I've tried all sorts of solutions, but my favorite way to treat water is to use a flask with a built-in filter like the New Solomon XA filter. When it comes to nutrition, I usually aim for about 250 to 350 calories per hour from a combination of run food like cliff bars, blocks, and gels, along with more regular solid food for longer days. But remember to always bring a little extra, even if it's just a bar. You never know when you might need to give a little nutrition to a fellow runner in your group or someone you meet along the trail. When you're in the backcountry, you should always have at least one first aid kit for your group. A small first aid kit like this is a great place to start, although you'll want to pull out anything you feel you might not need and supplement it with things that might be missing, like extra band-aids. I also keep some Advil, a few salt pills, some antihistamines in case of emergency, as well as a bit of duct tape for gear repairs. Just remember that having this stuff is useless if you don't know how to use it, so consider taking some basic wilderness first aid training. It can be tough to start a fire here on the wet coast, but for me, keeping a lighter or at least a pack of waterproof matches stashed in my first aid kit is a no-brainer. In addition to keeping you warm, a small fire can act as a signaling device. I have some friends who stopped to help out an injured hiker a few years ago who was going into shock. So they wrapped him in space blankets and they started a small fire. When search and rescue crews arrived on foot that evening, they said that the fire helped them to locate the victim much quicker. It's also a good idea to carry something to burn. I like to carry some laundry lint in a small waterproof container like this one. I keep a small pocket knife in my first aid kit as well. This is one of those you never know until you need it items. In addition to potential gear repairs and modifications, it could come in handy for making a fire, for building a shelter, and for cutting bandages or any other first aid applications. A good quality compass and a map can be a huge lifesaver, but again, only if you've practiced first how to use them. So consider taking an introductory course on navigation, which are often provided for free by some retailers. For most runs, I'll rely on my Sunto Barrow 9 to help with navigation. I can create and upload a route in advance to follow along with when on the trails. As a last resort, you can use an app like Gaia or even Google Maps on your phone, ideally having downloaded the maps first for offline use in case you don't have cell service. But I try not to do this because it can drain your battery and leave you without a way to call for help in case the need arises. Be sure to learn as well how to get your GPS coordinates from your phone, which can usually be done with the built-in Compass app. When traveling in more difficult terrain, especially if I'm alone, I'll also bring my inReach. Now devices like this aren't cheap, but they are an excellent insurance policy and they'll give peace of mind to your loved ones just knowing that you have it. 
This one allows me to send out my location every 10 minutes or so, so that someone with access can track me. And they allow for two-way text messaging to cell phones or other devices, as well as, of course, an SOS button to call for help. We often refer to this list as the 10 essentials, but in reality, some runs call for fewer, while other runs call for even more. In the winter, for example, I might wear crampons or even bring an ice axe. I'll wear a helmet when scrambling and I'll bring bear spray when appropriate. But there may be times when you're just heading out for a quick run around your local trails, possibly without even wearing a pack at all. It's important to remember that it's not all or nothing. Consider what the worst case scenario might be and then decide maybe which two or three of these essentials at a minimum you might wanna carry with you, whether that be a buff around your wrist, your cell phone in an armband, and maybe a small headlamp in your back pocket just in case. And of course, always tell someone where you're going and when to expect you back. So what about you? Is there anything I missed that you consider essential? Tell me about it in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.